TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe. Turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, if we go live and you miss it, I may or I may not put the highlights for the live on here. I don't really see the point when you could just pull up Twitch, put, type in my name, and you can rewatch the entire live. So you could do that as well. Um, don't forget, we do got merch. You get me. I don't have my merch on right now. I have this shirt where the collar, I don't know what happened to the collar of this shirt, but it's exposing all my taco meat, and it's crazy to me. I'm trying to, like, pull it back in the back so I could, you know what I'm saying, so I can get situated. Um, don't forget, we do got Patreon. We post Monday through Friday as well, man. The link to all of this is down in the description. It's under something called a link tree, man. Click it and everything will pop up. But let's get to this, man. This is Ape Honcho. You know, Ape Honcho be on it. Bringing us something very disturbing. Um, the most disturbing case you've ever heard. I've watched two videos with that same title this week, so we'll see. Talk to me. Open the windows. Open the door. All right, lads. Keep your hands where you can see him. Just keep your hands where you can see him, pal. This our police too. Yeah, what about that side? Just need driver out that side. Yeah, no bother. Just open door for us, mate. Until we confirm your identity, we'll put you in handcuffs. What's your name, fella? Eh? Yeah, Gilbert. 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 Suspicion of murder, okay. You don't have to well, say suspicion of him? You don't mention one question. Some people should be allowed in court. And it's just in the car, um, to me, to bring me. That's 29-year-old Joseph Pierce and 41-year-old James Witham being Is arrested for the murder scouse? of 28-year-old Ashley Dale. Oh. 23 days after the incident had taken place on the old Swan Estate in Liverpool, yeah, United I Kingdom. Knew it. The investigation initially seemed as if it would be a difficult one. It was clear that detectives from the Merseyside Police were going to have to act quick to solve this case. If they didn't, then maybe, just maybe, this would end up as Liverpool's latest unsolved murder case. Why then did an innocent council worker who lived a comfortable life away from crime get her door kicked in and have a hitman run through her home shooting indiscriminately towards her while she was watching TV with her dog? Let's take a that don't even make sense that why would they somebody do that? okay talk to dive me. into this case then and see how two best friends turned rivals caused the death of an innocent woman to begin we've got to head over to the Glastonbury festival I heard about healthcare dot. So two best friends turn rivals. Don't tell me they kicked down the wrong door. Glastonbury, a five-day festival celebrating contemporary performing art held every June in Somerset, England. Celebrity endorsement and its political stance have helped to push its popularity. So much, in fact, that some of the most famous artists in the world there? have touched down to perform there. Roughly 200,000 people visit every year, and in 2022, 28-year-old council worker Ashley Dale attended as she had done many times in the past. That year, she headed down to the festival with her boyfriend, Lee Harrison, Saz, a known Merseyside organized crime gang member and drug dealer. The pair were also with two friends, but only one is relevant to the story, Jordan Thompson, Dusty, also an organized crime gang member and drug dealer. We'll call this group Group A. I'm not going to say anything too much, but you know, girls always want to be with gangsters, man, but this is what comes with being dating a gangster, like... This is the lifestyle that you could possibly wrap yourself in. You're a college graduate. You've got GSEs. You've got degrees. Go find a doctor. Bro got on a hat with a design under the brim. He can't be good for you. There's nothing he could... With a hat like that on, there's nothing positive he can offer you. I'm just being real. Also in attendance is organized crime gang member Sean Zeiss, Zest, and his girlfriend, Olivia McDowell live. Although the pair headed down to Glastonbury by themselves, they were both associated with Group A, and throughout their time at the festival, they crossed paths with them. We'll call this pair Group B. Ian Fitzgibbon, Fitz, 
Olivia's cousin and his girlfriend were also in attendance. Dang. And just like Group B, they made their own way down to Glastonbury. Throughout their time at the festival, they crossed paths with Group A and B. Then there's Group D. This group consists of high-ranking organized crime gang member, drug trafficker, and arms dealer, Niall Barry, Branch, James Witham, and a few others that are irrelevant to the story. Niall knew everyone from the other groups and was even close with them, other than Lee Harrison and Jordan Thompson. However, that wasn't always the case, at least for Lee anyway. Back in 2018, Lee and Niall were considered to be best friends by people who knew them. They sold large quantities of drugs together, but that was all due to change. At some point during- There's always gonna be a power struggle. It, it's, the story doesn't go to bros who trap together, stay together. <laughs> no, there's always a power struggle. Somebody wants the plug, somebody wants some more money, somebody wants to move in on a- some, it, it never works out greatly. In 2018, Niall had a quantity of cocaine and cannabis worth somewhere in the region of £40,000 stolen from him from a stash house that was under his control. The Hillsiders, an organised crime group from the Hillside and Longview Estates in Highton, Liverpool, were said to have been behind the robbery. It isn't clear how this robbery went down, but what we do know is that Lee was heavily associated with the Hillsiders. And after the robbery, he sided with them, cutting off his friendship with Niall. One theory suggests that Lee sided with the Hillsiders because Niall had been robbing him. I told Lee he was getting bumped by Niall. Yeah. Ian told Lee that Niall had been robbing him by taking a bigger cut of the profit that was made from their drug dealing together. Mm. And so it looked then as if a revenge attack was on the horizon. After all, Niall Barry was a big player in Merseyside's criminal underworld. However, nothing happened for the next couple of years. After the robbery, it's believed that Niall left Liverpool and headed to North Wales to run a county line and to trade in illegal military-grade firearms. Niall would return to Liverpool, though, at some point in the future and had even bumped into Lee on various occasions, but nothing was ever said. Glastonbury 2022 As you know, four separate groups from Liverpool were in attendance that were known to each other although they were separated for a lot of the time while at the festival. Two separate incidents- See, A Poncho be breaking it down so systematically and then reminding us the four groups so we don't forget. Heard which would intensify for a lot of the time while at the festival. Two separate incidents occurred which would intensify the feud between Niall and Lee when these groups crossed paths at Glastonbury. At some point during the first day of the festival, Sean Sice and his girlfriend Olivia McDowell bumped into Group A, Ashley Dale, Lee Harrison, Jordan Thompson and others. Initially, the meeting was good vibes, but an argument broke out after Sean, friends with both Lee and Niall, stated that he felt Lee had done Niall wrong in reference to the 2018 robbery. To cut a long story short, Sean was punched in the head by Jordan Thompson and then he ran off leaving Olivia with Group A. The following day, she <laughs> broke up with him and started a fling with Jordan Thompson at Glastonbury. When Niall got word... No, 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 go back, say what? Lee and Niall stated that he felt Lee had done Niall wrong in reference to the 2018 robbery. This is Lee and Niall on the screen, okay. To cut a long story short, Sean was punched in the head by Jordan Thompson and then he ran off. <laughs> leaving Olivia with Group A. The following leaving Olivia with Group A. Day, okay. she broke up with him and started a fling with Jordan Thompson at Glastonbury. When Niall got word that Sean had been assaulted, he used the incident to reignite the issue with Lee. Remember, up until this point, the two hadn't clashed in any way. We don't exactly know why that was, but maybe it was because they shared so many mutual friends with each other, and that kept the peace. One of those people being Sean. But now, Sean had been assaulted for calling Lee. No, that, no, that's crazy. That actually playing out how it just played out. Imagine you out with your girl. And a random dude, not a random dude. So, uh, one of your ops or somebody you have a problem with goes up and punches you in the head. You run off. Now, you did leave your girl. You ran off on your girl because you were scared. And she went with the dude that punched you in the head. I always say that stuff, that's not how it works out in real life, but I guess in the UK, that's how it works out. You get beat up, you might get your girl took. That's crazy. 
be out about the robbery. Niall didn't care anymore. He was on the hunt for Lee and he was armed. Take a listen to what Niall had to say to Ian when he bumped into him at Glastonbury. At the dance stage, Niall came up to me. This was the first and last time I saw him at Glastonbury. He said hello to me, my girlfriend and some others that I was with. He asked if I'd seen Sean. I told him I saw him at Fatboy Slim earlier on, but hadn't seen him since. He then asked me if I'd seen Lee. I said no. He then grabbed a knife from his pocket and said, when you see him, tell him I'm going to stab him up. He wasn't aggressive towards me, but rather just showing me that he was armed. Following these two incidents, no more violence between the people. How do you even get in there with a knife? Don't they got security? Interest occurred. Sean did spot Olivia with Group A after he was assaulted though, but didn't say a word. Niall never crossed paths with Lee, and although Ian told Lee that Niall was armed and was looking for him, he didn't really seem that bothered, rather wanted to enjoy himself at Glastonbury. On day four, Niall and James Witham were making their way towards Glastonbury after staying at a nearby hotel. For reasons currently unknown, they were stopped by police. What have you got on top here, Frank? We believe they may have drugs on you. We're in the vehicle, okay? So, we're taking you for a search. A piece of enough wrong time. 10.25 a.m. Oh, yeah, the cars. This is... Mm. He'll tell us. He said it before, but... What's my passport? Niall. James has got £700 in cash on him. So that's, James. That's below the threshold. Oh, hello, Mr. Niall. Yeah, that'll Niall, yeah. That'll come in. We are always gonna be. Damn it. I always forget to turn my ad block on. I nearly need to stop forgetting. Niall, time is 25 2, mate. You're gonna be arrested of, under suspicion of possession of that, okay? That's, is it? That's not my bag. It's in your bag with your passport in it, okay? Yeah, I've just showed that to you before. My passport was in this bag. Uh, so, yeah, don't say anything about my own defence if you don't mention any questions. Think you later on in the court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence, all right? That's not my bag. It's got your passport in it. Ask him if he grabbed all my stuff before. Ask him if he grabbed all my stuff before. Is it just one bag? Just keep it pee, my boy. It's too late. Because if it ain't yours, then whose is it? You snitching. No, there's, oh, there's my, two my, bags. My bag, my bag, the carrier bag, the white bag. With all, with all the clothes in. He did say straight away that his passport's going to be in his mate's bag. I did say that, yeah, I did say that. Actually. Ah, he did say it, okay. Never mind. Um, Still snitching low key, like. You're under It's only two of y'all, so if it ain't yours, whose is it? For now, okay. So we bought now. Your bag, is it? Say again. The big blue hole. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Say again. There's ketamine in there, is it? Where else is it? Did he just say there's ketamine in there? Who's going to a festival off ketamine? You barely walk off ketamine. Like, it's tough. You say there's ketamine in the bag. Bro, and then you just told on yourself. Be shut up. Be quiet. Be quiet. They didn't even see that. <laughs> So the the most popular drug in the UK is ketamine. Y'all y'all wild. <laughs> I'm not here. Yeah, if y'all think I'm talking to myself, I'm talking to the chat. Like they tough. That's tough. I didn't find any. I'm I'm Can sober. The blue one. That one. Yeah. That's yours. Okay. Right. Okay. So. I'm gonna arrest you then. That's suspicion of possession of this, okay? So you do not have to say anything but they harm me defense, you don't mention any questions, think of it, right? 
level, okay? Anything you do say, maybe give evidence. Obviously, this is a lot. <laughs> he off the ketamine right now, look. Look. Listen to this, okay? So, do you not say anything about how we defend you? I'm answering a question saying that they're not cool, okay? Anything you do say, maybe look. give evidence. <laughs> Ah, he almost passed out right there. Obviously, this is a lock knife, right? Nah, I rock with the scouncers, though. The, the, so, I mean, if y'all watching this, we still cool. We played it after school. Where's the cat's been in here, then? Bro, be quiet. I've searched the bag and I can't find any cat's been. What was it in? <laughs> He's in the deepest K hole, getting red as rights, snitching on himself. So it's the the Japanese baseball cap. He's going to lose his bag. And the oh. guy whose passport it was in it is denying it's his bag, oh, saying oh, okay, it's his okay. mate's bag. Oh, well, it's on tape, so... Yeah. Okay. To be fair, I think as soon as... To be fair to Niall, the other bloke, yeah. as soon as he's been stopped, he sort of said, like, my passport's in that bag, but nothing else in there is mine. Oh, okay. And the other chap's like, yeah, that's my bag. Oh, okay. He's his passport's in it, so... Um, I didn't get the one first, because I thought it was his. Yeah, well, he's, he's got, got a passport Yeah, there. he's got no, no, one. I swear, every time there's a crime situation in the UK, like, the videos be so deep and in-depth and all the information be so public, like... And so, Glastonbury ended, everyone went home, and continued on with their lives. There was one person who couldn't do that though. The threats made at Glastonbury were a constant reminder of the danger that they faced, even if it wasn't directly aimed at them. Yeah, yeah, nah, we not, that's not snitching, he ain't snitch. <laughs> The anxiety that stemmed from the threat consumed Ashley Dale's life from the minute she found out that Niall was actively out to get Lee. To make matters worse, Niall had called Lee at some point after Glastonbury to tell him that he would be paying him a visit at his home address. And if you didn't guess it by now, Ashley lived there too. It's just giving me bad anxiety. Okay, but the, okay, go back, go back a little bit out to get Lee. To make matters worse, Niall had called Lee at some point after Glastonbury to tell him that he would be paying him a visit at his home address. And if he did- So gentlemanly, like he came, gave him a warning. So Niall called Lee and told him that he was gonna pull up on him. And they, they both lived together, him and Ashley. Did, did Lee tell Ashley that there is potential danger Hovering around the crib is my question. I didn't guess it by now. Ashley lived there too. It's just giving me bad anxiety. I just feel like I'm constantly worrying and something's going to happen. He's fucking being threatened by Branch and all shit like that. Is he going to end up doing something to Lee? I just couldn't cope with that. Branch is saying he's going to come and do something. He was saying he was going to come down and he never came down. I just think if he's going to do something, would he not give him any warning? I see BA with it. I don't want to have to go to Lee's funeral next and I just have a bad, bad feeling about everything, Mo. Proper stressed out all the time. Me nerves are gone when I'm out in the car with Lee. Just feeling like I'm looking over me shoulder all the time. Why didn't you leave that man? You knew it then. When you got, especially women, when women got that type of intuition like that, you follow it. <laughs> That's a gift. Y'all have that. Leave. <laughs> Nice little reenactment. So I'm so sorry to report that over the course of the weekend at around half past midnight on the early hours of Sunday morning, police were called to Leinster Road, reports of a shooting. Uh, at that location, we found that the property had been forcefully entered 
multiple shots had been fired and a young lady uh, who we now know to be Ashley Dale uh, had been shot and fatally wounded and unfortunately despite the best efforts of Merseyside Police and the North West Ambulance Service she succumbed to those injuries. We are supporting her family at this incredibly difficult time. Ashley was a lovely young woman with a career in front of her, worked for Knowsley Council uh, and had recently graduated and had a promotion at work. She was in her own home and should have been safe at that time. The people responsible for this attack are subject to our investigation and we need to do everything we can to identify who they are. So, okay, so Lee did warn her or, or Ashley was in the know, like, I know who I'm dating. I know what we're up against. I know his ops are talking about sliding. But she also knew, the so she knew the dangers of being around, being present. Like R.I.P. No, no, for real, R.I.P. to Ashley. But like, you got to get up out of there. You're in a bad situation. If I know one thing about some scousers, they're they're good people. They're good, kind heart people. But they go they. They in them streets. They pulling up. <laughs> well, they have no place in our society or our communities. They had no regard for Ashley or the law or the community. And I appeal to anyone with any information whatsoever or evidence around this to come forward, and contact us directly, Crime Stoppers, or through our major incident portal on the website. 11.40 p.m. August 20th, 2022. A grey Hyundai is captured on CCTV heading towards Ashley Dale's home on Leinster Road in the Old Swan neighbourhood, Liverpool. When the car arrives, two men get out and begin to slash the tyres of a white Volkswagen T-Rock belonging to Ashley. The men then stick around for a few moments. They were trying to lure people out of the property. However, no one would go outside. Ashley, who was at home with her dog, assumed the rain had set the alarm. Oh, that's why the alarm was going off, okay. Off, and so she didn't leave. Around 50 minutes later, the men return. This time, instead of attacking the vehicle, one of them, armed with a military-grade Scorpion machine pistol, walks up to Ashley's front door, kicks his way through, and runs into the living room. It takes Ashley a moment to realize what's going on, but when she does, she screams and makes a run for the back garden via the kitchen. However, the gunman isn't too far behind. Before she makes it to the back door, the gunman fires eight rounds towards her. He hits her once in the abdomen. She stumbles outside. That's the gunman then take. fires two shots towards Ashley's dog. After firing ten shots, the gunman made his way upstairs and fired five more rounds into an empty bedroom before fleeing. I've just heard a loud noise in the back. I've stood on my back wall and the house is immediately to the back of us. There's a lady lying there in shorts and a t-shirt and she's groaning. She's lying in the backyard on her back. She looks like she's struggling. Please, does anyone here make yourself known? Officers with taser. Hey, you got to think about it, man. When you're in the streets, I know a lot of people not going to get this, but like when you're in the streets, if you can't get the first, if you can't get who you looking for, unfortunately, it's the next best thing. Ashley, Ashley, she, she ain't no no better, man. She should have distanced herself, man. Love... <laughs> They say love don't cost a thing, but it cost that girl her life. That's tough. R.I.P. This is a nice house, too. She got carpet on the stairs. Back door is open. In the fireplace. Feel free to keep it's a W ad placement. I can't even lie. It's perfect. It got me right at the pinnacle of watch. And then it's unskippable, which is tough. When police arrived, they were met with a bullet riddled home. As officers rushed to locate Ashley, they came across her dog cowering away in the corner. Thankfully, she survived. Sadly, the same couldn't be said for Ashley. Emergency services tried their best to keep her alive, but in the end, she would succumb to her injuries. They were described as catastrophic.
So a murder inquiry was opened, and initially it seemed as if this was going to be a difficult one. For those of you who aren't aware, when similar attacks have happened in the past in Liverpool, police have been met with a wall of silence. You see, many locals fear for their own safety if they come forward with information. However, I don't think so, man. Ashley had too much going on. People probably was mad about it recent many people have done that to help assist police investigations this being one of them just days after ashley was murdered members of the public told police that word was getting around that james witham was the gunman so why was ashley targeted then well you see she wasn't the actual target her boyfriend lee harrison was she just so happened to be in the house at the time when the gunman entered lee harrison this is the man who wouldn't cooperate with the police to help find his girlfriend's killer and the same man who told ashley's parents that he had no connection to the shooting whatsoever Police didn't need his help to establish a motive though, nor to help catch those responsible. Believe it or not, Ashley played a huge role in solving her own murder. Text messages and voice notes recovered from her phone helped police paint a timeline of events from the 2018 drugs robbery. So it was clear to them that the motive had been revenge stemming from that incident. The police's theory went as follows. James Witham and a man known as Joseph Piers were dispatched from a flat in the Highton area of Liverpool to assassinate Lee Harrison, James Witham, the actual gunman. These orders were handed down by Niall Barry and Sean Zeiss in revenge for the 2018 drugs robbery and Glastonbury attack. Once all four suspects get back come with time, we say it all the time. We know that. had been identified, it was time for police to make their arrests. There was one slight issue though. All but Sean fled from the local area. Sean was arrested by police just over a week on from the murder. In his first police interview, he wrote a prepared statement saying he had nothing to do with the murder and denied being present at Ashley's home on the 21st of August. Another interview would take place days after the first one. Sean would stick with his story. This time around, he explained he was disgusted by what had happened and told police he had nothing to hide, which is why he didn't flee. Joseph Piers and James Witham made their way over to the McCure Hotel in St. Helens after the murder had taken place. They stayed there for one night, enjoyed the spa and checked out the following morning on August 22nd, 2022. I say this, I always say this when I be watching these type of videos, man. You really never can tell in the UK. Like out here, you almost know who the who the K-I-L-L-E-R-S's are, you know. But out there, it's like anybody could be the, the starbucks barista could be a stepper out there you don't know who who got it up <laughs> okay where they at a marriott Why is this so eerie right now? What's going on? It isn't clear what they did on the 22nd, but in the early hours of the following morning, they headed to Scotland to more than likely evade capture from police. Police were unable to track their movements while in Scotland, but by September 13th, they had intel that they were traveling back to Liverpool in an Audi Q7. It was time for them to be arrested. Open the windows. They can't Open get back immediately. All right, lads. Keep your hands where you can see him. Just keep your hands where you can see him, pal. Yeah. I'm put you in some handcuffs. Yeah, what about that side? Just need to drive around that side. Yeah, no bother. Just yeah. open door for us, yeah. mate. Until we confirm your identity, yeah. we'll put you in handcuffs. What's your name, fella? Joseph. Eh? Joseph. Joseph. Right. Tom's just getting drive around. No, it's really just secure. Arrest on suspicion of murder. Okay, you don't have to say anything. I am a defence. You don't mention my questions. Some people later on in court. And it's just you do in the say car. Maybe um, to me, to me. Suspicion of murder. Ask him where he's from. He says, "Counselor, he said, lives inside." 
doing? Gonna put you in cuffs, mate. All right. What's your name, fella? Francis. Say that again. Francis Kelly. Gary. Francis. Gary Francis. Francis Gary. Francis Kelly. Right. Kelly. 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 It's all right. My ears, your. All right, we'll walk over here, fella. <laughs> you gotta let go of that cigarette. You trying to hang on? It's over. That's gonna be your last free cigarette. I know, so I get it. Go ahead and smoke it, man. You got anything on you you shouldn't? No. Anything in the vehicle that you shouldn't be? Yeah, James. Right, okay, you're under arrest for suspicion of murder. All right. Yeah. Does giving a fake name ever work? Like, come on, like, you're roadside. Armed police is right here. You gave a fake name, Francis Kelly. Two first names. They going f they know who you are. Can't say anything. The main army defense, you don't mention my question. You gotta try it, though, I get it. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. All right. What, whatever time was now. Yeah. Come on, we'll, we'll come over here. We'll sit behind my vehicle. It's confirmed that he is, James. That's the gunman. Gunman. So the Eight Sleep is a pod cover that fits on a mattress like a fitted sheet, but it's temperature controlled. So that sounds amazing. <laughs> On the 24th of August, 2022, three days after the murder, Niall packed his bags and headed over to the Formby Hall Golf and Spa Resort in Formby. That's about an hour away from the flat in Highton. Intel. They probably stopped, used the credit card to get some gas somewhere. Somebody said, um, I wonder how the police knew that they were traveling back. Yeah, that's tough. Getting nicked for an M and knowing you did it and it's over with. Like, he almost literally cried on the roadside. We seen that. All four yeah, men would go on to be dramatic. charged with murder in this relation is a to the situation. Situation. conspiracy to murder in relation to Lee Harrison and conspiracy to possess a prohibited weapon with intent to endanger life. All four men denied the charges that were placed against them and would go on trial. Surprisingly though, James Witham, just weeks before the trial, admitted that he was the gunman, but he never meant to shoot Ashley, so in his eyes, this was a case of manslaughter. However, the prosecution wouldn't accept the guilt. That's not how, it's, that's not, that's not how that goes. And so he had to go on trial anyway. A seven week trial took place throughout October and November of 2023. All defendants, apart from James, of course, tried to distance themselves from the murder. James said the shooting was an act of reckless madness and not a deliberate targeted incident. He said he didn't see Ashley in the house. He just wanted to shoot the place up to send a warning, adding that he was saddened by how much pain he had caused. Joseph Piers said there was no reason for him to have been involved in the incident because he wasn't involved in any of the background leading up to the shooting. He hadn't attended Glastonbury and he didn't take anyone's side in reference to the drugs robbery. Sean Zeiss said that on the day in question, he was at the flat in Highton watching live sports. He stuck to his story that he had absolutely nothing to do with the murder because he had no reason to hate Lee. You see, when Dusty attacked him at Glastonbury, according to messages sent from Ashley to friends, Lee was the one who told Dusty not to go after him again as they had been friends. Niall said that he had no connection to the shooting as he had been at the flat with others including Sean in Highton, adding there was no plan to attack Lee. However, the jury didn't believe any of them, and they were all found guilty on all the charges placed against them. Oh, what they get? 17 years? At 11.40. Oh, we got footage? 
p.m. on the 20th of August last year, a Hyundai car drove into Leinster Road in Old Swan, Liverpool. Inside were two men, James Witham and Joseph Piers. They drove there as a result of a criminal agreement with Niall Barry and Sean Zeiss to kill the occupants of 40 Leinster Road using a Scorpion submachine gun. They each knew that Lee Harrison lived there with his partner, Ashley Dale. It was their home. The car had been acquired in the days leading up to what happened, with false number plates ready to use when the hiding of the car followed. In an attempt to bring the occupants out of the house, Witham and Piers stabbed the car tyres of the car parked outside. That set off the car alarm. Inside the house was Ashley Dale in her pyjamas watching television. When she heard the alarm, she believed it was caused by heavy rain and so she stayed inside. Outside, Witham and Piers waited for their moment for this planned killing. What followed was a murder of such seriousness that it has shocked both the local community and many in this country. The use of a military-grade submachine gun to kill a young Scorpion woman is tough. in her own home at night in a planned shooting of the occupants of that house is beyond any understanding. Imagine, do you see, Ashley was in the crib, probably watching Love Island, chilling with her dog, and that happened. I know she was terrified. That's bogus. Dandy. At just after half past midnight, Witham got out of the Hyundai car, wearing a balaclava to hide his face. He carried that Scorpion submachine gun, loaded with 15 bullets. He broke through the locked front door, walked into the dining room. Ashley was in that room alone, moving towards the kitchen back door to escape, and there were lights on so that she was visible. Witham wickedly fired 10 bullets towards her as she was vulnerable and defenseless. One of those bullets passed through her abdomen and killed her. Her screams were heard by neighbours. Leaving her to die, Witham went upstairs looking for Lee Harrison. In a bedroom, he fired a further five bullets into the wall as a clear statement that if he had been in the house, he would have been killed also. After the shooting, Witham and Piers drove away. The car was parked elsewhere, out of view, and later that day to be hidden on the driveway of a property in St. Helens. A week later, it was driven by Piers and Zeiss to be hidden on another driveway in St. Helens until it was discovered by the police on the 9th of October. Ashley Dale died very shortly after she was shot. Lee Harrison has refused to cooperate in the police investigation of her Somebody in the chat said they are struggling to feel sorry. I, I told y'all, like, when it comes to stuff like this, I'm super jaded to it. Like, like, I hear it, but I'm also hearing, the, I'm reading it between the lines as well. But it's also like, true, why didn't you leave? You knew what was up. You know what I'm saying? You know how scousers get out? If they say something, they'd be almost, it's law almost, it's bond, you can count on it. So involved with criminal drug dealing gangs, is he? For the family of Ashley Dale, this must have been a cruel twist to the tragic loss of their daughter and sister. Not only was she brutally killed in her own home, but Lee Harrison has refused to assist the police to bring her killers to justice. Stand up. I sentence each of you to imprisonment for life on count one for the murder of Ashley Dale. Niall Barry on count one, murder. Your minimum term is increased to 35 years, but must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two, three, and in the second indictment. Your minimum term is 47 years, less 433 days served on remand. James Witham on count one murder. 
Ain't the game that man forty seven? That's the I think that's a that's a I ain't gonna lie, that's one of the hardest th- like that's tough. A forty seven piece nugget? Well you ain't gonna never you might as well wrap it up. Your minimum term has also increased to 35 years, but must be further incre- increased to reflect your offending on counts two and three. Your minimum term is 43 years, less 295 days served on remand. Joseph Pierce on count one. Well, I don't know how you can sit in that court and be <laughs> and take that amount of num- numbers. 47 years. It's over for you. You finna. It's over for you. You're you're, you're turning gray. All your your life is done. On murder, your minimum term is increased to thirty three years, mm. but must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two and three. Your minimum term is forty one years, mm. less two hundred ninety five days served on remand. So forty. Sean Zeiss, on count one murder, your minimum term is increased to thirty two years. But must be further increased to reflect your offending in counts two and three and the second indictment. Your minimum term is 42 years, less 448 days served on remand. And they they said they said minimum, so they gotta serve that 42, the whole 42, whole 42, 43, 47, and 44. On count two, conspiracy to murder, I impose a concurrent sentence of imprisonment for life on each of you. With a minimum term of 18 years custody. Oh, jeez. On count three, conspiracy to possess a prohibited firearm and ammunition with intent to endanger life. I impose a concurrent sentence of 14 years imprisonment on each of you. That's tough. The sentences on the second indictment of 30 years imprisonment for you, Barry, and 10 years for you, Zeiss, will also be served concurrently. They're running concurrently, but still, still... You will each be required to pay the statutory charge, but in your cases, Zeiss and Barry, I postpone the making of the order until the conclusion of the confiscation proceedings under the Proceeds of Crime Act 2002. In your cases, Piers and Witham, I make the search charge order now. Like, listen to how crazy that sound. They got sentenced in... When did they get sentenced? 2022, 2023? Or was... What's 47 plus 2023? <laughs> what, is, what is that? That's 2070. Imagine picking up the phone to your girl and being like, yeah, baby, you're going to wait for me. I'll get out in 2070. She from the click, 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 click. She will hang up. 2070? That is different. Like, you can't, you can't even really, you know what I'm saying? You can't even really fat like I don't even know what's gonna be going on in the world. I can't even imagine the world in twenty seventy. Will be in the appropriate amount and set out. God be sick. Take them down. Susan, just say it once. You no. Know? Just one time. She's not gonna do it. Come on, we got a bet going. What's the bet? Oh, that Ted can get mom to swear. Just eat your supper, fellas. Ian Fitzgibbon had also been on trial, charged with the same offenses, but he beat the case. He celebrated in court when the not guilty verdicts were given. This more than likely was yeah, the result it. of him being very close with Ashley and Lee. In court, he said if Lee had cooperated with police and gave evidence at the trial, he would tell the jury how close they were, meaning he wouldn't take part in the murder plot of a friend. And so, that's the tragic tale of Ashley Dale. I think sometimes as viewers, we can forget that these are real people behind these stories, with real people who still today are hurting over the loss of a loved one. This case, though, is even more heartbreaking because the family haven't just lost one child to gun violence on the streets of Liverpool. You see, back in 2015, Ashley's innocent younger brother had also been shot dead by gang members. In that case, Lewis Dunn... God damn, gee, their parents are going through... Lost both their kids to violence? That's crazy. Ashley's brother had crossed paths with three gang members on his way to borrow a bike. 
The gang members had been on the losing end of a clash with rivals earlier on that day and they mistook Lewis for a rival gang member. Lewis was shot in the back with a double barreled shotgun. The suspects, Jake Coleshaw, John Martin and Paul Martin, left him for dead. That's a family then that's lost two innocent children. That's crazy. Two civilian children lost to gang violence. Y'all gotta, y'all gotta move. To gun violence on the streets of Liverpool. Yeah, I feel bad for the parents. See, that's see, that's the thing I be having to remember. Like, I'm jaded to all this violence, like, cause I've seen so much of it, and I be knowing that it'd be more to a story than what you hear and what's really out and blah blah blah. But like, at the end of the day, these people got parents. And right now, the parents is going to, they're going to feel that pain forever. That pain is never going to go away. So, my condolences go out to the parents. R.I.P. Oh, there's one more. There's a younger sister. Dang, I'm glad she didn't stay, her little sister. Really? Oh, so he did get labeled. So, okay. So when we was feeling them snitch vibes earlier in the video, we was right. <laughs> After the trial, it was reported that Neil... Well, we still don't know. We're, we're from the outside looking in, matter of fact. The people in the neighborhood labeled him that. So, all right. <laughs> After the trial was... It was reported that Neil Berry, Sean Sissons, and Ian Fitzwood were named as potential shooters in the murder of a... Huh? Lee's not cooperated from the very outset of this case. You know, it was one of the first things we were briefed on back in September of last year, and it hasn't changed as the trial's ongoing. What we've done is we've gone, OK, well, we're still going to investigate and prosecute this case, irrespective of your wish to hide away from these criminals, your wish to, you know, to hide away from what's going on and bury your head in the sand, which I think is particularly important in respect of Lee. Um, but we have got that perseverance, and the police certainly have it. So the no-grass culture, the police will investigate irrespective, and we will look at other avenues. Um, but Lee's actions in, in not assisting whatsoever, particularly not assisting the family, are quite frankly disgusting. I think there was very early on a conscious decision made uh, for whatever those reasons were um, from him to not fully cooperate and... Uh... Oh, Lee, I don't even know why we're discussing this. Lee's not, Lee was not going to say nothing. It didn't matter that it was his girl. Like, like let's just rip the band-aid off. It, it doesn't matter. Y'all still got what y'all, it still got done. Um, Ashley has had to do it herself. Um, y'all still got y'all. I would say it's never too victims. late for anybody um, to come forward and help disrupt criminality and take um, weapons off the street of this nature. So, no, it is never too late. Um, we still have, even though we've come so far and found out so much and um, have such extensive evidence to convict these individuals for what they've done. We still want to encourage people to come forward and include those that are involved in criminality, uh, that they can get themselves out of it, they can take weapons off the street, and they can help prevent other victims of such horrendous crimes um, and prevent it from happening. So my ask would be, the Scorpion is still outstanding. It is an extremely dangerous weapon. Um, I want to know where that is. And any information will be acted upon. I'm not gonna lie, I was just about to ask, where y'all get a scorpion from? Like, where y'all get that from? We would really like to recover that. And y'all might as well hang it up. Y'all not recovering that. It's over. Maybe like ten years down the line, you find it, but like, nah, nah, not nah, nah, now. You know. Oh, they're popular here. Okay. I'm Rob Jones, Ashley's stepdad from when Ashley was 12. Just to start with then, do you want to tell us, talk about... That's, that's the mom? Ashley, just tell us what she was like growing up. 
back and what your memories of Ashley are? Yeah, it's um, it's difficult to sort of just this can sound really funny. This it's hard to sort of remember back since before this happened. I know that sounds really strange, but I feel like I'm something with a time warp really from mm. August last year. Um, but she was she was obviously has Ashley when I was sixteen, so we grew up together yeah. pretty much really. We were like best friends. Oh okay, she had her when she was sixteen. Okay, so she only 16 years, she was 16 years old, 30, 22, 23, 33, she's only 39. That's disappointing. Um, she, she was good, she was a good, good child. Um, she was number six, she's very career driven, she knew what she wanted. She, um, she had a job from when she was 16, although she always worked. Um, and then obviously decided to go into the chosen career of environment and health that she went into. She went to university to do a degree for. She was very outgoing, she was happy, she, she loved going out, she loved clothes, um, she loved the festivals um, and she was very family orientated as well. She had two younger sisters, I think probably from about the age of five she always asked could she have like a brother or sister. Um, and I was kind of in the process of starting my career at a bit of a later age as so she had four kids originally she got two little sisters and an older a brother that passed away and she got a little bit older and stuff so couldn't really deliver that until like, she was 16 <laughs> and she um we had a we had our first baby together me and rob so she got a little sister which she was absolutely delighted about um and then we decided to have another one and she was a bit like, oh, I really wanted one. <laughs> so I think she was a bit taken aback that she got two sisters in four years. But um, but no, she she loves her sisters. She really, really did. She spoiled them rotten. And, and you, you mentioned how close you were. Did you have a kind of more of a sister relationship? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. So we, we spoke every day, daily, on the phone, via, you know, a, a phone call. Most mornings, we one of us would ring each other and check in for the day. Um, and then it continues throughout the day, like, you know, a real a WhatsApp message or, you know, a call or whatever it be. I still feel for you, like, RIP, but that is concerning for me, what you just said. We have more of a sister, we have more of a sister instead of mother-daughter situation going on. Because, like, I don't want to speak on y'all relationship as mother and daughter, but, like, I feel like if y'all had a mother-daughter dynamic instead of a sister sister dynamic certain things wouldn't be going on but i'm gonna keep it peeing keep it you know respectfully respectfully she'd send me you know we'd share fashion tips or things for house you know your house on instagram or whatever nevertheless you couldn't have chose who she dated it is what it is so we had constant dialogue every day until sort of bedtime, but that sounds mad, but that's how it was pretty much every day. Really. Yeah. Um, the last year, it, it, you know, it, it has been unbearable, it really has. You know, you, never mind just having to deal with the fact that Ashley's not here anymore, you know, that you know, she, you know, she's just passed away. That the whole, you know, details and the whole how it happened and everything else being thrust into this public arena. You know, Ashley's death being so public, you yeah, know. See, that's why I'm trying to, you know, bite my tongue a little bit. You know, being broadcast. broadcast. And, and you're a salutable young woman, too, so. It's on television and in the papers and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it's 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 been very hard. I feel, I, I describe it that I feel like I'm having an out of body experience. Like I'm living someone else's life. And I don't know if it ever will feel real. Yeah, that sucks. You gotta live with that. Um, Obviously, I know that Ash is not coming back again. I, you know, I know that I'm never. She's obviously she's. Never mind. Gonna see her again, but in terms of how it happens and stuff, I don't think I'm ever gonna be able to accept it. It's never gonna make any sense to me as to how or why this has happened. Have, have things that you've heard during the trial surprised you? Did you, you expect everything that came out that, that you've heard, or have you been shocked and surprised by some of the things that have happened? Yeah, I've. Respectively, um. I feel your pain. I will. Ne I I hope to never know your pain, but I I understand. Um, this was a this was a crazy story for sure. But I'm just gonna leave it like that, man. Tell her leave it like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notifications. I'm gone.